As surf ski paddlers, how do we safely simulate rough water conditions in order to learn better balance control? Is it possible to transfer the sensation of wind chop and ocean swell to a calm lake or waterway? My name is Jim Smith and I would like to share a device that I designed and built in Wilmington, North Carolina. I call this gadget an imbalance trainer. It is attached to the hull of a surf ski with two suction cups. The primary element is this tensioned rubber strap contained within an aluminum tube. The pole sways and disrupts my balance as the surf ski is paddled through the water. The trainer transfers loads to the surf ski that provide a range of sensations from gentle swells to being struck from the side by a wave. There are two elements to balance in a surf ski, cockpit contact and paddling technique. Where are the contact and subsequent balance control points in a surf ski? I drive the surf ski forward with my feet. I sit on my rear end in the bucket. It stands to reason that I can derive some balance from these points of contact. If I cannot maintain firm pressure at these points, then the boat is free to wiggle and twist beneath me. The paddle is my contact point with the water. Every stroke has the potential to provide balance. Now for the imbalance trainer and contact point control. While slowly paddling forward, I resist the rocking motion induced by the trainer. I am gripping the surf ski by applying pressure with my legs through the balls of my feet and the top portion of my gluteus muscles just below the back band. Not so much force that I cannot rotate my hips, but just enough so my knees drop slightly. I am holding the surf ski at the contact points while keeping the hull balanced. The imbalance trainer makes paddling this V10 sport in calm conditions feel as unsteady as a V14 in wind and chop, and as a result, I am required to use more of my muscles to counter these forces. The oblique muscles above my hips will fatigue quickly. The second component of balancing a surf ski is paddling technique. While paddling a little faster and resisting the sway in the pole, I throw my hips quickly to the side, inducing a strong rocking motion with the pole. I continue paddling and try to calm the pole as quickly as possible by resisting the rocking of the hull with the contact point pressure and bracing with the paddle. Using my paddle to aid in recovery is much easier if the surf ski is moving forward, so when conditions are really rough, I feel more confident and able to recover with less anxiety if I just keep paddling. If unsettled during the power phase of a stroke, then I use the stroke as a high brace and sweep the blade further from the boat before exiting. It helps to lean back slightly and pull back harder on the shaft with a secondary power phase if forced to respond at the end of the stroke. And what about when the blade is out of the water and I am about to reach for another pull? Tapping the surface helps, and a quick slap is executed with either the top or bottom face of the blade. Whenever I lose my grip on the surf ski, I sweep the back of the blade across the surface and realign with the contact points in the cockpit by lifting my hips and shifting the hull beneath me. There are two things that we must never do with our paddle. Do not spear the blade and lean into it because there is no power to be gained and no possible recovery. The second maneuver guaranteed to end in a swim is a low brace with the shaft in contact with the side of the hull. You will actually be pulled into a capsize when you try to extract the blade. Feel free to copy or modify this imbalance trainer to meet your needs. I hope it helps you gain confidence and stability while paddling your surf ski.